morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers of this conference for the platform that they've afforded us to communicate with the technical community, joining us on site and also online. Um, as mentioned, my name is Tatum Figwe from Internet Society, Gauteng Chapter. Um, just to give you an introduction to the chapter, uh, we are one of the two chapters within the country. And since inception in 2013, uh, we've had two co-reading meetings, one in, 20, in 2014, December, and then our most recent AGM was in February, on the 3rd uh, of February, yes. Um, so our vision is centered around promoting policies for accessible and uh, oh, uh, uh, our vision is centered around uh, promotion of policies for open and accessible internet. Organization, um, and then uh, the board, the current board that has recently been elected, it has got about eight members, and then uh, we've got different pillars within the organizations. We've got an HOD for technical; uh, they are responsible for building capacity within the chapter uh, for the members themselves and also for our beneficiaries. And then we've got our communications and marketing; they basically do communications and marketing. And then um, we've got our policy and advocacy head that is responsible for engagement of policy, making comments on policy on different aspects within the IG uh, space. Um, our capacity building head is responsible for making sure that we are able to actually like go out to communities, reach out, and actually like communicate about what the digital ecosystem is about while we encourage them to participate within the IG ecosystem. So um, currently our membership is around 188. Um, so we are present in six provinces of the country and then we've got membership also around the globe. As you can see, we are present in uh, Latin America, Middle East and Europe. Although some of the members of the chapter, they also have their own chapters within the country, but in order for us to have different views within the chapter, that's why we've decided to actually have people outside the country to be part of our chapter. Um, now, in terms of the projects that we run, um, ever since inception from 2014 till 2016, we have been focusing a lot um, on establishment of community networks. Um, so we've supported two so far in the country, one in Gauteng, uh, in the name of Soweto Wireless User Group, and also in the Eastern Cape, Zenzelini uh, Community Network. Um, so our team has been actively involved in policy engagement and discussions because we work very closely with ISOC as a chapter, obviously, but we are also involved within ICANN because we are a member of AFRALO as a chapter, and just recently we were coordinating an NCUC outreach before ICANN 59. Um, so we try as much as we can to get our members to be involved uh, within the different um, uh, spaces of the digital space, globally, locally, and regionally. Um, so in, in, uh, between 2014 and 2016, we once coordinated a DNSSEC training and some of our members are also within the room in here. Um, so from 2017, moving forward, we have been involved in a lot of activities, um, like we've been working with ZTCR to ensure that uh, there is a better intake of uh, domains, like assisting them and actually coordinating with them, outreach to communities to ensure people understand what are the principles or how does it work uh, in terms of one becoming a domain reseller. And then uh, in May 2017, we were involved in the Regional Internet and Development Dialogue in Rwanda, whereby we looked at the impact of the internet in regards to education 
and the digital uh, economy. Um, the Community Network Summit uh, last year we also attended and this year. Uh, this year uh, some, uh, only two members were able to attend and they obtained some technical training uh, because as a chapter we feel that we need to strengthen our technical department and it would be a pleasure to actually like receive some of the people who might be interested in joining the chapter to strengthen our technical pillar. Um, and we have planned to have um, celebrations. Uh, I hope it has been announced. Where ISOC will be having 25th anniversary celebrations. So as a chapter, we've been selected as an interactive node. So on the 19th of November, we will be uh, having, so having these celebrations in Johannesburg, in Bramfontein, uh, whereby we'll be recognizing people who have been playing a very uh, powerful role in terms of ensuring that internet actually is available to anyone and everyone participates within the internet uh, space itself. Um, and then we have another project that we will be running very soon starting from October until October next year. So it's a 12-month program. It focuses on content development and translation uh, because our focus is to work with schools and universities whereby they start translating articles around internet governance to ensure inclusivity and diversity within the IG and digital space. Um, some of the articles that we wanted to actually like include as part of this project, um, that most of most of these articles are more around policy, but we would also appreciate to actually have some technical documents for interpretation, as we believe that if we have technical documents, uh, we will be able to build a strong community. Uh, around technical, uh, whereby they can make input in terms of these documents that are generated from the technical community itself. So one of the reasons why we are pushing this particular project um, is that according to the African IGF that happened last year, one of the outcomes was, was that we need to localize the internet which is one of the reasons why we are actually pushing this uh, particular project. And one of the things that we've identified is that users, whenever they go online and they do not necessarily use their own mother tongue, it does have an impact in terms of them being secure, uh, uh, having a secure online identity. So we're trying to actually promote that and ensuring that they have maximum internet experience whenever they are online. So at the same time, we are trying to get more people online and increase adoption rates because affordability is one of those reasons why we have low adoption rates, but also language also plays a role in regards to that. So um, as I mentioned, that technical documents, reports, articles, and content needs to be translated to how wonderful it would be for underrepresented regions and communities um, to actually start working on these technologies and standards uh, based on information that was presented to them in their own mother tongue, which they can understand better and they can start innovating within the space. So um, other articles that we, look, we, we have already identified, um, they relate to internet society, uh, internally generated content and reports, I can generated content, uh, Africa DNS study and internet shutdowns so that people understand how to play and what is the status of the digital economy within the country and the continent, including globally. Um, now, just to give you a brief background in terms of what we are committed in as a chapter. Um, a chapter is committed in furthering the goals of the IETF, the, engineering, uh, the Internet Engineering Task Force, in fostering a multi-stakeholder approach to technical development and standards that allow for permissionless and bottom-up approach to innovation. So Internet Society Holding Chapter is committed to engagement in the policy space in respect to the current dialogue around Internet governance. And uh, we are complementing the work of the technical community in strengthening security by creating, uh, by engaging in policy and uh, policy debates around universal monitoring across 
the local and regional internet space. We also acknowledge that there are issues of uh, digital trust that must always be kept at the forefront uh, of dialogues uh, that will be happening within the conference. Uh, as governments have also started to take notice of the power of the internet for economic uh, and uh, social growth within the country and for citizens themselves. But now, coming to the models of governance, uh, the models of governance that are embraced domestically and internationally, they do not work together uh, because we want to see a shared technology and uh, a social networks being the order of the day. As stakeholders, we have much to do to advance and protect a multi-stakeholder approach uh, that has been so far been more effective than other, any other model of governance. Um, now, in regards to the ION, ION conference, uh, it remains a central platform for learning and networking and staying informed about the internet standards and technologies like your IPv6, DNSSEC, uh, anti-spoofing, to name a few. Um, but IPv6, we do recognize that it, it plays a very critical role in the growth of the internet, and we intend to support any initiatives that will ensure that IPv6 uh, is deployed like nationally as much as possible, although we understand that there is still a lot that needs to be done to ensure that there is a, a, a improvement in terms of the actual deployment itself. So the Internet's uh, open nature is what makes it ideal for business, education, and communication, but the absence of security mechanisms is something cyber criminals are always eager to uh, take advantage of um, from your international routine leaks or DO, to, to, to DOS uh, uh, attacks and hijacking of unused IP addresses. But now, to pull off such attacks, spammers need to, uh, uh, always need to find ISP that will accept their fraudulent routine. Uh, advertisement without too much scrutiny. And all these problems, they require cooperation uh, and collaboration amongst network operators to fix this because the internet has no central governing body that would, that could force ISPs to implement these security measures. So my presentation is not necessarily that much long, not too much technical, and I'm not expecting to be getting a lot of technical questions um, but um, basically, that is the end of my presentation. But as a chapter, we welcome the launch of the mutually agreed norms for routing security. Um, there are network operators in some country that, uh, mainly in the global north, but they are spread across, but they are mainly in the global north, they, that offer services to uh, cyber criminals. It is not expected that these companies would want to comply uh, with the provisions of the mutually agreed norms uh, for routing and security. So um, that was it, and thank you. Uh, I don't know if there are questions, yes? Hello, uh, Calvin Brown, ex ISOC ZHA from a long while ago. Um, I, I've been trying to find out what you guys have been up to, and it seems like you've been doing a, a huge amount of, of, of good work there. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I, I can't see anything on your webpage. It's blank. Um, there's uh, no mailing list that I can join that will let me know what you guys are up to, um, and you don't. Um, post things to, to, to the ISOC um, uh, South Africa mailing list, for example. I mean, some of these things, if you, if you at least just send it through, you get a whole new audience and, 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 and things like that. So I, I, I would like to know how I can find out about these things and, and, and you know, keep track of them because I'd like to get involved. Okay, thanks. Um, as I mentioned that there is two chapters within the country. 
Um, a scouting chapter, we always communicate with our members using a central platform called ISO Connect. That's where we post updates, post reports, and members are able to make comments. So in order for you to start being involved, maybe through mailing lists and stuff like that, it would basically mean that you need to join the chapter, and then you will get updates in your inbox, and then that way it will be much simpler to keep up to track in terms of what we share with uh, the current members. Um, I hope I've fully answered your question. Thanks. How do I join myself connect? Okay, okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, I'm very frustrated. Okay. okay. <laughs> so to, to join ISO Connect, it's very simple. It's a very simple process. You just go to www.isoc.org and then you register to become a member of ISOC. You put in your credentials, your information, your email addresses. Once you've joined, you'll, re you'll receive an, an email in your inbox and then it will give you a link whereby you are able to select the chapter that you want to join. And then once you select the chapter that you want to join, and then that's when you can start getting those updates. But should you want to get more clarity in terms of how to go about, we can uh, talk about it after uh, this particular communication. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll just add one bit to that. The, uh, if you go to internetsociety.org, I don't know where you went, by the way. Um, <laughs> if you go to internetsociety.org, on the very top bar, there's a, a button that says Internet Society Connect or Connect Login or something along those lines. So that's where you'll see it. Okay. I thought that it doesn't support the Connect community because it doesn't address the RSC standard. <laughs> Um, sorry, Alan Levine from ISOC ZA. Uh, we've had some concerns with the uh, Connect community because it requires that you post above the line and various other aspects that are non-RFC netiquette um, norms for email. So ISOC ZA, that, that might be the way to work with ISOC Gauteng, but ISOC ZA doesn't actually use the Connect community um, service that ISOC uses globally. Okay. okay, thank you.